radio astronomy, and EMR. Visible light is responsible for everything that we see. Visible light is only a small section of the electromagnetic spectrum, though. So, the electromagnetic spectrum describes all different types of wavelengths, from really short wavelengths to really long wavelengths. The visible spectrum is kind of midway, and we can only, our eyes can only see these types of wavelengths. Anything smaller or larger, we can't actually see. Each one of these wavelengths represents a different color on the spectrum. Again, the electromagnetic spectrum covers all forms of electromagnetic energy, most of which are not visible to the human eye and that are released by electromagnetic processes. So really long wavelengths are radio waves. Then we have microwaves and infrared heat. Then we have our visible spectrum where our red wavelength is the longer wavelength and our blue and purple are the shorter wavelength. From there, anything shorter that we can't see becomes ultraviolet, UV. It becomes then X-rays, the shorter it gets, and it becomes a gamma ray as the shortest. Forms of EMR, or electromagnetic radiation, like radio waves, infrared waves, and x-rays are emitted by stars and galaxies. Each of the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum differs by the wave's frequency and wavelength. These forms of electromagnetic energy provide valuable information about the nature of the universe. This can't be captured by an optical telescope. Again, it's only visible light that it can collect. So, we need a radio telescope. Radio waves are received from the stars, the galaxies, nebula, the sun, and even some planets. Radio telescopes have an advantage over optical telescopes because they're not affected by weather, clouds, atmosphere, or pollution, and can be detected day and night. So we can collect radio waves at any time from really anywhere. So how were they discovered? Carl Jansky found that there were radio emissions that were interfering with phone lines. Using an antenna, he found that these emissions rose and set with the sun, with the stars, and different planets. He concluded that radio waves were coming from space and interfering with the phone lines um, that were using radio signals. So um, they built a radio. That was like the first radio telescope was really just this antenna. And then it, it developed from there. So a radio telescope uses a bowl-shaped reflector called a dish to collect radio waves from space. So this dish is collecting radio waves and beaming them to this um, antenna, this radio receiver. So again, the reflector focuses the waves into this antenna that changes them into electrical signals. And then these signals are um, amplified, recorded, and... Um, a computer is used to kind of draw a picture of the source of radio waves and or to analyze them. This was a giant one and it made the news um, at the end of last year, I guess. And uh, because it was the largest one, it was in South America and this collapsed. And it was really detrimental to science because be due to the size, it was able to collect really weak radio signals from far away um, celestial bodies. And um, its loss is felt in science. Because radio waves are so long, remember they have the longest wavelength, um, they must use larger detectors. That's why they are so giant. So using radio waves, we can see low energy images like gas clouds or nebula. Radio telescopes create false color images. The colors are added in using a computer. So we use blue for low intensity waves. And um, as the signals go stronger, the colors go to greens, um, yellows, reds, and whites. So this is a stronger signal up here than it is in the middle of whatever it is that we're looking at here. So again, combining technologies. 
using optical connection, so as radio telescopes have now improved with higher resolution, astronomers can connect the radio wave images that they create with visual data from optical telescopes. There's also, again, radio interferometry, so combining um, several radio telescopes. Again, the greater the distance between the telescopes, the more accurately they can measure posi position, like triangulation. And the very large array is the most accurate set of connected telescopes. Don't forget to take a look at the learning guide for number five, and there's some extra practice in your textbook.